I was I was coming off of being in Miami a night of party and I don't really remember what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Would you like a reminder? Yeah, sure. Play some play. Look, hey yo, listen, yo, I, I love it all. I love it all, man. I like yeah. when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, when you put my bag Daddy, yeah. I like when you oh, when scrambling right and scraping. No, no, no. That was you. Scrambling. <laughs> <laughs> what? You said, I like when you do it like that, Daddy. <laughs> when you scrambling and scraping for shit. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I was talking about. Hey. Nah, nah, I mean, I was You don't called, go back no, and no, look no. at that stuff and laugh? I mean, it's, I mean, it, it could be funny. I don't really be on it like that. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. like. I'm you sure know, we can I, put Charlemagne's compilation against Diddy's compilation. We have a bunch. We put Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I also, I also don't do it because I know I'm, I know I'm bad at the game. Right. <laughs> 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 I know I say like reckless stuff out my mouth that's just not maybe you know adding up to with somebody who maybe somebody who's homophobic, but I'm not homophobic and I really don't you know care. You know what I'm saying? I just. But um, I'm bad at the game, and it's probably hilarious. I would love to see it. I would love to see the video compilation. It's hilarious. 50, yeah. 50 came up here, and he was giving you flack for the asking Fab to party. So you, he'll ask you, oh, he'll ask you to play it, play it, play the clip, man. Yeah, play the clip. Go ahead. Why won't you party with me for your birthday, man? I, I, yeah, we, we party for my birthday before. You came to my party. You know? No, but me and you ain't never really party, you know what I'm saying? I asked 50 about that. He said you did the same thing to him. You asked him to take him shopping. Yeah, thought he needed some clothes. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm a nice guy. Yo, what, I mean, why are you and Fib just? Hey yo, why are y'all not? Hey yo, I don't have no beat with with with. I, with, I don't know why. With, with Fib, he loves me. He loves me. No matter what Diddy says now, fans think it's finally over for the rapper. One of the big questions right now is where is it Diddy as of now? No movement outside of his home other than the press, us, of the media. There are pictures circulating online showing him possibly in Florida. Take a look yesterday. Federal agents not only raided his home here in Los Angeles, but also in Miami. It's believed uh, the raid was associated with a federal trafficking investigation based out of New York. The rapper has recently been associated with legal trouble, including lawsuits over alleged assault and sex trafficking, which he's denied. Yesterday, agents were seen detaining two men who were later identified as Diddy's sons. Uh, they were not arrested. Dozens of agents searched the property, bringing out boxes and even looking through cushions and outdoor pole furniture. Neighbors tell Eyewitness News they frequently see parties at the property lasting all night, but they weren't aware of any illegal activities. Just recently, rapper and business mogul 50 Cent has revealed the startling truth about the shocking raid at both mansions of well-known singer, rapper, and producer Sean Diddy Combs, revealing details that the feds were indeed tipped off. Along with finding sex tapes at the rapper's mansions, the feds seem to have come across a lot more shocking stuff. Here's everything you need to know. After a surprising police raid at both his mansion, Sean Diddy Combs is currently juggling a multitude of unresolved legal matters. Authorities conducted raids at the 54-year-old rapper's homes in Miami and Los Angeles as part of an ongoing investigation into sex trafficking. Law enforcement sources claim that these actions are part of a larger probe into similar practices. Yet, because the matter is still under investigation, details of Combs' involvement are not yet public. If anybody thought they was getting away with anything, they're not. Anything you've been hiding is going to come out. 
we thought 2023 was bad 2024 is is going to be even worse it's going to be 10 times worse and then guess what guess what guess and so what? like i said um guess fox what? 11 in los angeles uh Hold on, guess is... what and then jay-z is next although i have a feeling before jay-z and beyonce let their house and how Ziz get rated, they'll go ahead and just pack up their ish and they'll be over there in Dubai somewhere. They'll be over there in Bali doing yoga with, with, with Russell Simmons. They'll be letting white men to skinny, saggy, breasted ass white men just jump them up and down on their feet. All right, Diddy, take that, take that. Your shit finna get took. They getting the computers, they getting the phones, and they getting everything. Now, when asked about the kind of allegations Diddy could be held accountable for, Rapper 50 Cent expressed one particular troubled instance that dates back to the old Diddy flavor camp. Given Usher's legal issues and allegations of intentionally spreading herpes, there is conjecture that their early professional relationship with Diddy may have had unfavorable consequences. Similarly, Justin Bieber has also been transparent about his battles with drug misuse and breaching the law, which he blames on his mentor and senior colleague Diddy. First time I smoked weed was in my backyard here got super stoned and then I realized I liked a lot. That's when my desire to smoke started and then I started smoking for a while and then started getting really dependent on it and that's when I realized that I had to stop. I don't think it's bad, I just think for me it, it can be a dependency. But yeah, first time I smoked, I, was, I don't suggest this, but I was 13. Yeah, 13, 12 or 13. Not sure what I was doing before ya. Yeah. I quit trying to figure it out. Was there anything that really concerned me? Um, yeah, I think maybe like, uh, maybe the lead when he was drinking that. Can I say that? There was a time where I was sipping, I was popping pills, I was doing um you know shrooms, everything and it was just an escape for me i was just young you know like everybody in the industry and people in the world who experiment and do you know just normal growing up things but my experience was in front of cameras and i had a different level of exposure and people and like I had a lot of money and a lot of things, so then you have all these people around me just kind of hanging on, wanting stuff from me, knowing that like I was living this lifestyle that they also wanted to live, drinking, smoking. I think when you take somebody very, very young and they start to get horrible, crazy, crippling anxiety and it goes undiagnosed and you don't know what it is that you're feeling, you start to self-medicate because it makes you feel better. Just help you not to feel anything. With all the success that we've had, we've also had some really turbulent times. When he turned 18, it started bubbling a little bit. 19 to, 19, what was it, 21? That was probably that dark period. We didn't speak a lot during um, some of the times where he was running amok. You know, there were a few times where I saw him uh, and it just kind of hurt my heart seeing him the way he was, you know? So I think I just kind of put a little distance with that for my own sake. It would just go without saying that my position on maybe the path he was going down, but at the same time, just letting him live his life and learn, and, I don't know, just do his thing. I know that Justin knows a good person from a, I don't even know if anyone was a bad person. It was just kids mostly, but like knows good from bad and knows right from wrong and he's making some wrong decisions, but I never really believed that that person that the whole world hated so much was who he is. On the flip side, Usher has been raised from an early age to become an R&B superstar by none other than Diddy. In 2016, after a year with Puff Daddy when he was 14, he informed interviewer Howard that he really knew what it meant to be famous while giving up one's dignity. I moved to New York City and I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. To learn <laughs> Flavor some... Camp. Yeah, Flavor Camp! Yeah, that's what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's gonna In pre- the 90s, do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was, like, just filled with dicks and orgy, and like, nonstop, right? No, nah, not really. Come I mean, on. but, did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. 
Usher's unique education, dubbed Puffy Flavor Camp, started when he was a teenager and amazed music producer L.A. Reed with his musical prowess. After that, he was sent to live with Puffy in New York City at the height of Bad Boy Records, where he gained insight into what it required to be a successful musician, which wasn't too much about music, but was more about actually charged experiences. It was it was pretty wild. It was, so nobody it was tried to, you know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't and, say that. Okay. I, I didn't but say that. <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place. Uh huh. And I didn't necessarily understand. It. Uh huh. Biggie Smalls was there. Biggie Smalls was there. Lil Kim, Craig Mack. All you know, these people all are hanging these, around. All, yeah, man. Faith Evans. Jodeci, Mary okay? J. Blosh, they ain't know nothing about the shit. Oh. <laughs> I was having a good time, you know what I mean? Not to forget, comedian and actor Cat Williams also seems to have foreseen Diddy's encounter with the law, saying in the interview, All of these big deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It doesn't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. All lies will be exposed. In 30 years, I've done nothing but collect information, knowledge, and your secrets. I know so many things I shouldn't know, and they all know it. All of these uh, big de deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. T.G. Jakes, any of them, the, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way, know why they take it the wrong way. In 30 years, I've done nothing but collect information, knowledge, and your secrets. So if you and a man was in a corner doing something you wasn't supposed to be doing... You will tell it. No, somebody come to tell me. Okay. I gather that, I value that, I'll pay for that. Come, tell me. I know so many things I shouldn't know and they all know it. They all know it. Why? Because you don't make me the villain. Being as frank and upfront as he could, Williams also shared details about one instance that seemed to expose Diddy even more. According to Cat Williams, I gotta protect my integrity in that virgin hole I was telling you about because P. Diddy be wanting to party and you gotta tell him no, Williams said, adding, you gotta tell him no. I did. I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you. Why would you downplay me like that? Why did I give you a pass if you were just gonna lie? And so that's what I'm saying. And against them, then they sometimes have a problem, but we don't let that change the content because that's all you know me for, is that I'm quite likely to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Now, I've had to turn down $50 million four times. Four times just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right, because uh, P. Diddy be wanting to body. And you gotta tell him no. Oh, you Lord. got to tell him no. I, I did. I did. See, I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you. That's why I can yeah, say them yeah, so I need freely. Kid, 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 I need so now, if the many claims of sexual assault against Sean Diddy Combs weren't enough to put the rapper on edge, 50 is now stoking speculations about Diddy's illegal activities and the possibility that Clive Davis is the person who has been providing Diddy with relief for years. So you would think that the idea of being surprised by an allegation of sexual misconduct uh, with someone famous, you shouldn't be surprised anymore, but this one's kind of surprising. Rap star, hip hop mogul, Sean Diddy Combs, right? He's been hit with a spate of lawsuits recently about his alleged conduct, but this one, the fifth one, is unlike any of the others. This is from a man a male music producer named Rodney Jones. Now his allegation is Combs forced him to solicit sex workers and underage girls for sex. Okay. But also drug him, sexually assaulted him and groomed him to have sex with other men. And there are other, a lot of salacious accusations too. That's one of Diddy's M.O. I know a former record executive during the time that they gave Donna Ross that, that anniversary in California. One of his former record executives met with him. And I guess he was trying to pray with him or whatever. But he tried to give him a pill. That's his M.O. 
He just showed you his hand. That's his M.O., bro. Not just that, Diddy and Jay-Z are billionaires in the music business and have been friends for a long time, which may have kept Diddy from being caught up until now. Yet, some in the business, including 50 Cent, have accused Diddy and Jay-Z of suspicious behavior, including covering up murders and being involved in trafficking rings. Beyond that, 50 is currently upgrading his list of exposés and believes that Diddy and Jay-Z may be working together to hide each other's illicit activities in the music business. Naturally, everything appears to be aimed at Diddy, particularly since Cassie abandoned her case against him, in which she accused him of a number of violations, including emotional and physical abuse, as well as human trafficking and rape. This looks like Diddy being behind bars. I also think that justice looks like everybody getting retribution for all of the things. The amount of therapy, like I just said, all of my, all of the moments, the time, like these are our careers. Oh, he's standing in the like living room area and she's there. And he was like, emotional singing, there you are. And I just was like, oh, he's talking to me. And I remember like, I don't know if you know his, his what his voice sounds like, but like, I felt like I was in the presence of his monster inside. And I remember like looking in his eyes and I said to him, what did y'all do? Cause I could see that she was like really sedated. That was the first time I ever seen her like high before. And then he says, tell your girl she wants some birthday And we were like, well, I mean, he's saying this to me and I'm like, well, she doesn't have to have sex with you if she doesn't want to. He was upset, like, you know, I guess that she, that she didn't want to do with him whatever she, whatever he wanted, I don't know. You know, he hiring the people, he gonna put it all on her. Cause she knew what he liked. Cause she wasn't just hiring it for her. Don't get that effed up, Art. If you think that she was just hiring those male for herself? Nah. Bruh. I was in one of those uh, exotic bookstores with her. I saw this dude pick up clubs. And that's the first time I ever seen some shit like that. And when I said, yo, my man, what you getting this for? He said, you know, can I do my shopping by myself? And I said, yeah. And when I looked up there, it said plugs. <laughs> and if 50, Cat Williams, and the raid by feds wasn't enough evidence of the courts and Diddy, the rapper's ex-bodyguard is also all set to share his side of the story and reveal the long list of crimes that his ex-boss has committed for years. You see, P. Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene Deal, has been making an effort to expose the true offender. Bruh, I knew about the plug fetishes because I saw that with my own eye. I knew about him and Kim being switched with other people whether it was another male or another woman or a male and a woman together, I saw that with my own eyes. You got to realize is that after 2005, I didn't see anything that Puff was doing or what he didn't do. Puff had got addicted to opioids. And being addicted to those things bring other drugs. On. I seen Puff smoke a cigarette. I never saw him smoke a cigarette. He was on the beach smoking a cigarette on, on YouTube. Then I seen him, you know, uh, smoking weed and drinking. I was like, that ain't the Puff I know. So he ain't gonna do what he do around other people in front of me, cause he know I'm gonna check him on that. But what you trying to do? So to say, that what he's being known for with Cassie, I can only equate to some of the things that I've seen him and Kim go through. You understand what I'm saying? So people get mad, you know, but it is what it is. I can only equate his actions like that. 
Not to mention, Diddy did, in fact, groom Justin Bieber, Usher, and Mace, and expose them to these freak-offs at a very young age, according to Gene's confirmation. Because of this, each of the three of them has made an effort to keep as far away from Diddy as possible on their respective accounts. Man, it's a lot of stuff that Mace or, and, and, and Usher know that they ain't telling about Diddy. It's a lot of stuff that they know. Can you imagine, bruh? Can you really imagine? So, will we be seeing more of such witnesses and exposés against the rapper? That's all for today. Make sure to share your thoughts in the comments below. For more updates, hit the bell icon.